then what about you? It was you who acted as a nurse to your mother-in-law. You were the last member of the family to speak to her, which gave you a unique opportunity of plunging the hypodermic into her wrist. Also, you had a motive. What motive, for God's sake? Her love for you, sir. Yes. She behaved well towards her mother-in-law simply because of you, until she found out that your spirit was broken. She tried to rouse you, to convince you to break free, but she could not. And so, she determined on one last desperate gesture, using the old trick of jealousy. Or she was prepared to go further than mere flirtation. She threatened to actually leave you. And if that failed, there was only one alternative, to eliminate her mother-in-law's influence over you by eliminating a mother-in-law. I killed her. Why? How can you ask? I am asking you, sir. Because of what she had done to us, to our marriage. Your wife only told you of her decision to leave you when she joined you down at the excavations, after Mrs. Boynton was dead. What does it matter? I knew anyway. But it matters a great deal, sir. Look, I strongly advise you to tell the truth. By God, I will. When we left the tents, I knew it was all up unless I acted fast. It dawned on me that if I made one decent gesture, I could still save everything. What gesture, Mr. Boynton? Same as Raymond's, I guess. I've had enough to tell Mother I was getting the hell out. Going down. My idea was to take Nadine away that very night. She'd come with me. And when you reached the tent? Wake up, Mother. Nadine and I have... I started to talk to her until I realized she was dead. I didn't know what to do. You corrected the time on her work. It, it was lying there in her lap. I just acted mechanically. It was horrible. Then I walked down to the excavations. That is the truth, I swear. I believe you, Mr. Boynton. Your explanation is consistent not only with the facts, but also with your psychological condition. This is all very interesting. Indeed, touching. But I'm expected for cocktails by Lord Peel in an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. You may continue with your exhibition, Monsieur Poirot. I am going. Of course, Lady Westholm, of course. Better not be late for the loyal toast, what? <laughs> Look, why don't we all go? Everyone welcome. Celebrate George Mark VI. Though, I suppose I ought to say sorry about your Mrs. Simpson. I'm very disappointed. I would have expected an American woman to navigate skillfully onto the throne. Colonel Carberry, were you asking us all to the coronation ball tonight? I was, Miss Boynton. Thank you. Sarah? I don't imagine there'll be much in the way of boogie. Come on. Do you know who did it? I have until midnight, Colonel. You didn't even mention that business this morning with the Arab boy. Well, that will come later. It only confirms what I know already. The information you wanted from America, sir. Has Colonel Carberry seen this? Seen what, old chap? Huh? I said, Poirot, what are you doing with that fellow? I thought you were supposed to be waiting for me. Help me with my tie, will you please? After all, it's, it's your coronation. Not that you've met a lot, kid. He's better than you, Ray. Oh, surely no one's better than Ray.